Hello, I'm Ian Gilmore. I'm a physician gastroenterologist from Liverpool, and I'm also currently president of the British Society of Gastroenterology. I've been involved in developing this trial of tranexamic acid in upper GI bleeding, and I'm really enthusiastic about the possibility of saving lives, not just in the UK, but worldwide. About 60,000 people are admitted to hospital each year in the UK with acute upper GI bleeding. About 10% of these patients will die, and mortality is four times higher in patients who re-bleed. I think this is a really important trial, firstly because GI bleeding is so important, secondly because we've not made substantial impact on mortality over 40 years, and thirdly because it is a really important cause of morbidity and mortality, not just in the UK, but worldwide. And its biggest impact is in developing countries where often treatments like endoscopic therapy are not available, yet tranexamic acid we know from trials and other scenarios can be given very easily, very cheaply, and very quickly uh, in emergency situations in developing countries. Patients with acute gastrointestinal bleeding will generally be admitted as emergencies, either through the emergency department or perhaps acute medical unit. But also, patients who are inpatients with who are sick with other conditions are at risk of developing gastrointestinal bleeding, which can uh, pr produce quite profuse bleeding on occasions. There are other small, there are other rarer causes of bleeding which tend to be less profuse. This trial is in important for patients in the UK because. The GI bleeding audits that we've done in the UK show that despite all our advances in treatment, endoscopic treatment and pharmacological treatment, the mortality still remains high for gastrointestinal bleeding. Anything that we can do to improve this will be of great benefit to our patient population. Patients may be treated differently in different hospitals. This is a real advantage for the trial because it means that the result is going to be generalizable to real world practice and we will know whether this treatment has a benefit or not out there in the real world. In emergency situations, you can recruit sick patients into clinical trials. There are well-established ways of doing this. There's an excellent legal framework that tells us what we should be doing. And there's also a lot of experience in emergency care with various trials that have happened over the last few years that have shown that this is relatively easy to do, is acceptable to patients, and provides a really good trial methodology. Consent and hold to trial uh, will require some thought because it involves take, getting consent from patients that are in the emergency situation and who are very sick. But the need for consent in this situation is actually being thought about by sort of global bodies like the Declaration of Helsinki and good clinical trial practice. Because unless patients in emergency situation who are very sick can actually get into clinical trials and benefit from science, we will never be able to improve outcomes. So this has been really well thought about by all these organizations. And in the trial protocol, we make very clear that patients can be randomized into the trial without prior written consent, if the situation requires that. The special thing about randomizing large numbers of patients is that when you randomize large numbers, the um, you get two groups who are identical apart from the treatment. Um, if if in, a, in very small trials, you can get imbalances, and then it's important to make sure that everything else is the same, if you can. But in a big trial like the Holtip trial, we can be confident that the two groups, the group that gets tranexamic acid and the group that gets placebo, will be identical apart from the treatment. The HALTIT trial is looking at the effect of an intravenous infusion of tranexamic acid on mortality in patients with significant gastrointestinal bleeding. The trial treatment is given in addition to all standard treatments. The trial is taking place in hospitals worldwide. Hospitals are assessed on the basis of the number of eligible patients and on their ability to conduct the trial. Hospitals need to have the necessary approvals before starting the trial and the coordinating centre will help you with this. Also, 
we will make sure that you have all the materials and trial drugs to start. We will also provide training for you and your team. If we show that tranexamic acid helps patients with GI bleeding, this would improve patient care worldwide. Patients suspected to have GI bleeding should be considered for the trial as soon as possible. The diagnosis of significant GI bleeding is made by doctors in the normal clinical way. Patients may have hypotension, tachycardia, or need a blood transfusion, urgent endoscopy, or surgery. Adults with significant acute upper or lower GI bleeding are eligible for the trial, providing that there is no clear indication or contraindication to tranexamic acid. The age of adulthood varies in different countries. Significant GI bleeding is an emergency and the priority is to provide the best available care for the patient. The consent process takes into account the urgency of the situation, the capacity of the patient and the distress of the people accompanying the patient. If the patient is fully competent and the clinical situation is not urgent, this allows for informed consent. The patient is given information about the trial. An opportunity to ask questions and consultation with others should be given and then written consent obtained. If the patient is too ill, but a person accompanying the patient is willing and able to provide informed consent, the accompanying person should be given information about the trial and an opportunity to ask questions and to consult with others before written consent is obtained. The patient should be given information appropriate to their level of capacity. If the patient is too ill, the person accompanying the patient is too distressed, and there is insufficient time, use the brief information sheet to get agreement from either the patient or accompanying person. Any objection to being enrolled in the trial must be respected. This agreement is not a valid informed consent. If the patient is too ill and no one has accompanied the patient, consent must be obtained from a professional representative if approved by your ethics committee. If a professional representative is not available to give consent, a decision to waive consent and randomise can be made by the responsible doctor following consultation with a doctor who is independent of the trial. A record must be made in the patient's notes about how the decision to enrol was made. Signed informed consent must be obtained as soon as practical, either from the patient when they regain capacity or from a representative. Once eligibility is confirmed using the trial entry forms and the appropriate consent process has been completed, the patient can be randomised. To randomise, select the treatment pack with the lowest number. 
treatment packs follow a trial randomization list and therefore must be used strictly in numerical order, starting with the lowest number first. Please note that randomization is completed as soon as the ampules have been confirmed as being intact. Even if the treatment is not given, the patient is now in the trial. The entry form must be submitted as soon as possible after randomization so that the coordinating centre knows that the patient is now in the trial and so that the coordinating centre can manage your drug supply. The trial treatment should be given as soon as possible after randomization. The loading dose should be given over 10 minutes. The maintenance dose should start immediately after the loading dose and infused over 24 hours. Both doses must be prescribed in the usual way. Do not infuse with blood, mannitol or penicillin. The outcome form should be completed from the patient notes at discharge, death, or at 28 days, whichever is earlier. Both the entry and outcome forms can be submitted online. Alternative ways of submitting the trial data are also available. If at any point during the four weeks following randomization, the patient develops an adverse event, this needs to be reported to the trial coordinating centre. Reporting advice can be obtained by calling the Coordinating Centre Emergency Helpline, which can be found in your study file and wall posters. A written report using an adverse event report form must be submitted within 24 hours. If the patient is discharged within four weeks, an alert card should be given and the patient advised to carry it with them for four weeks. If the patient requires medical care during that period, he or she should show the alert card so that the principal investigator can be notified. The success of the HALTIT trial depends on the collaboration of doctors and nurses in participating hospitals and those who hold key responsibilities for the trial. Thanks to them, we can find better ways to care for patients with GI bleeding. We also thank the patients and their families who take part in the trial for helping to improve the care of people with gastrointestinal bleeding. The team at the Coordinating Centre and your own national coordinating team are here to help you with any trial-related matters and will keep in contact with you throughout the trial. Blood for transfusion is not only a scarce product, but it's also a costly product. Although the cost may vary between different countries, when one compares it to tranexamic acid, it is likely that tranexamic acid will be a very cost-effective alternative to blood transfusion in some of these patients. I think the, the key, one of the key features of Holtit is it offers you know, great potential for doctors in training grades, um, both in emergency medicine, acute medicine, gastroenterology and surgical specialties to get involved on the front line in a trial that really has the potential to drastically alter the way we manage patients with GI hemorrhage. Um, patients with GI bleeding pitch up at all hours, any day of the week, and the frontline staff involved in their care who, who often attend to these patients initially are nursing staff and, and medical staff in training grades. So it really offers um, a fantastic opportunity for trainees to get involved in, in a trial and learn some of the processes involved in the trial. We, as research nurses, enable the department to recruit patients into trial and we try to reduce the burden of research on the clinical staff by uh, looking after the clinical care of some of the patients that we recruit into our studies. HOT it's going to be a, a great trial to be part of. Uh, we're going to run it on our three sites here at Bart's Health and me and my team are really looking forward to uh,
get up and running and getting patients into the trial? The HALTA trial is open to collaboration from any doctor uh, anywhere in the world as long as they look after patients with gastrointestinal bleed. The way they can get further information is to contact us via the trial website, which is www.haltit.lshtm.ac.uk.